Hi, uh, so I'm Akar. I'll present topic learning of Jan Xenophoric gesture shortcuts. And uh, I'm uh, in the DGP lab at University of Toronto. Did this work in collaboration with a bunch of folks, uh, Anthony Albert, Vimal Chandran, Gautam, uh, Kai Trong, and Ravin Balakrishnan. So uh, let's talk about freehand gestures. Um, freehand gestures are mid-air gestures which use only our bare hands. Um, now, broadly, there are two types of freehand gestures, uh, manipulative and semaphoric. Now, manipulative is when the gestures directly manipulate an on-screen object, like manipulating a pointer. Uh, semaphoric are symbolic gestures, where each gesture is a symbol that corresponds to a direct command or an action. Um, for example, a two-finger gesture can correspond to a cut command. Now, uh, semaphoric gestures are often used as command shortcuts, uh, but they are even more useful in mid-air because uh, pointing in mid-air is very prone to arm fatigue. And semaphoric gestures can rapidly invoke commands and reduce this arm fatigue problem. Um, but the problem with semaphoric gestures is that they require learning. And that is what we tackle in this work, uh, the learning of freehand semaphoric gestures. So now for semaphoric learning, uh, the user needs to learn the association between a command and a gesture. So for uh, example, for learning a set of gestures, a user sees the stimulus for the command as an icon and then sees the stimulus for the associated gesture as another image, right? Um, now if we classify the current approaches of semaphoric gesture learning, by the modality of the stimulus uh, that is used for the command and for the gesture, we get this table. So visual visual, for instance, uh, means that the user sees both the command and the gesture uh, visually. Uh, and this table is not just limited to freehand gestures, but semaphoric gestures in general. Um, and most of the literature that we have here is in the desktop space. Um, and we see that aside from a couple of cases where uh, sound is explored, all the other approaches are visual, visual. Um, and this makes sense because um, desktop users have consistent engagement with a visual display, but that's not true for freehand gestures because there are so many diverse contexts uh, where freehand gestures are applicable. Um, large screens, small screens, no screens, on the go scenarios, and uh, consistent visual engagement is simply not possible in all these situations. And therefore, we ought to explore non-visual modalities for learning freehand gestures, like haptics. And if you look at this table, uh, there is no haptic modality there. And given that right now we already have so much interest in the space of mid-air haptic feedback, it seems kind of obvious to explore haptics for learning gestures. And therefore, in this work, we perform the first investigation of haptic learning of semaphoric freehand gestures. And we ask three questions with respect to this. Um, can haptic stimulus be used for associative learning of gestures? If yes, is it better or worse or similar to visual learning? And third, how does haptic learning affect image and longer term recall? And so we conducted a study. Uh, and we add two new categories into our classification, uh, visual haptic and sound haptic. Now, we don't have haptic versions of commands, uh, not yet at least. Uh, so we study haptic stimuli for conveying the gestures, and the command stimuli will be conveyed as a sound or a visual uh, stimulus. And we compared these two conditions with the visual visual as our baseline. So we chose a command set of 14 objects, which has been used in earlier studies. Uh, we can't see them, but these are fairly uh, simple objects, banana, cycle, keys, so on and so forth. Um, the gesture set is a set of 14 air tap gestures uh, using the index, middle, and ring fingers. Um, for example, if you have an IMR gesture, it is an index tap followed by a middle tap and the ring tap. Okay, now for the gesture stimulus, we have two ways of providing the stimulus for the gesture, uh, haptic and visual. For haptic, we uh, implemented vibrotactile rings for the three fingers. So for instance, for IMR, the rings will vibrate in the index middle ring sequence, right? For visual, 
uh, as you can see, we use the series of three on-screen indicators. Again, very simple. So three conditions, sound haptic, visual haptic, visual visual. In sound haptic, the user listens to the command and feels the gesture through the vibrations. Visual haptic, user sees the icon and feels the vibrations. And visual visual sees the icon and sees the indicators, right? And these are three conditions that we compare. Okay, the design was between subjects, 30 participants, so 10 in each condition. Um, it was a two-day study to measure both immediate and midterm recall. Uh, day one had three blocks, one training and two testing blocks, and a third testing block on day two. Um, each block took approximately 10 minutes, uh, and the users were given corrective feedback during the testing blocks. Again, uh, the study design is in accordance with earlier uh, gestural learning studies. And these are the results for the recall rate in the three testing blocks. Uh, sound haptic is blue, visual haptic is uh, the second one, the green one, and the last one is visual visual. So uh, let's focus on block one. Uh, you can see there are differences of about 10% between each condition. Uh, visual visual has the highest recall rate at 70%, then it's visual haptic, and then sound haptic. And the difference between uh, visual visual and sound haptic is statistically significant. So it shows that at least initially, visual visual is better than sound haptic. Uh, there's no statistical, statistical difference between the other pairs. Now by the second block, we see that the differences are narrowed, but sound haptic still has uh, statistically less recall than visual visual. A visual haptic, on the other hand, comes very close to visual visual. Now in testing block three, the differences are narrowed even more, and there are no significant uh, differences between these conditions. And this is interesting because this particular block took place on the second day. So it shows that the midterm recall uh, does not dip for any of the conditions on the second day. And by the time we reach the third block, which is less than 30 minutes of learning, all conditions have similar recall rates of about 85 to 90%. So in summary, uh, visual haptic learning performs comparably to visual visual. Um, sound haptic has a lower initial recall rate, but with less than 30 minutes of learning, it gets comparable to the visual conditions and midterm recall uh, for haptic learning stays constant. Now, of course, our focus was to study haptic learning for a simple scenario, but there are so many different gestures and different learning techniques. Uh, and now that we know that haptic learning can work um, and work in this fashion, the next step is to apply it to other scenarios. So if there's just one takeaway nugget that I want you to take uh, from this, it's that haptic learning is a viable method for freehand semaphoric gestures. Uh, and it opens up a diversity of contexts for gestural learning. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? I'll ask a question. Do you feel, um, as with visual and haptics and all sorts of stimulus to, to actually get the, the sensation uh, for learning, um, the stimulus itself might matter, right? You chose a particular visual stimulus of yes, a couple of stuff. Yes, definitely. And, and no. you also chose a particular yeah. haptic one as well. Yep. What do, you, do you feel like that will, or do you have any comments on oh, No, on definitely, how, uh, that, that will affect? matter. That, that will matter a lot. The, so, I mean, because this was a first investigation in this space, um, we chose the simplest procedures because we weren't even sure that haptic learning can work. Um, but I think going forward, the, we have to explore uh, different stimuli, both for commands, both for uh, gestures, and also different learning techniques. You know, for example, in visual, we have these learning by doing techniques, sure. right? In, in this particular uh, experiment, we did active learning, where the user dedicates his time for learning. But uh, mostly, uh, we do learning by doing, like uh, curtain backs, uh, marking menu learning techniques, right? So we need to think about ways of incorporating haptic learning in those kind of situations as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Let's thank our speaker one more time, and we're going to our last talk.